first national summit on big data economy. I'm interested to see how we could improve our marketing. Meet um, other practitioners who want to exchange notes on what we have learned. I'm expecting to know how Nigeria's position with regards to data science, know how to apply it to my work. Today, data science is the number one career in the world and it represents so much value from an outsourcing perspective. And we need to be ready to be able to join this global platform for our national reinvention and opportunity creation for a lot of young Nigerians. Information without that data, you have no idea whether, whether the policy that you introduce is working. You have no idea even if the policy you introduced in the first place was the right one. So I think data all across the world, they say there's a direct link between countries that take their data seriously and the level of development. It has caused the U.S. economy close to 15% of their GDP, about $3.1 trillion every year. You know, if we take, you know, that, that size of economy and we translate it into Nigerian terms, it's close to 24 trillion naira. What this means is that it is extremely crucial that poor data is addressed. It's good information. What is high quality information? What is the fast high quality information? The CEO, he needs a data scientist so he can make the right decisions. And it's organizations that make the right decisions all the time are the ones that are going to win in the end. So clearly, building trust in the data is going to be very key as we go forward. Because if I rely on the data and it fails me, we will have taken one step forward and five steps backwards. This is about taking the data that you have and the insights to use to create new business value for, uh, for the business, all right? Creating additional sales, understanding the customer such that within that same context of the application, you are providing the customer with something else to buy. Think of how can I solve real big problems? How can I like use data to reduce or eliminate traffic? So now, if you look at all our problems in the society, you find out that most of the problems can be solved with technology. But the use of sensors, tracks, trackers, actuators, and the likes. For example, road traffic management. I, before I leave my house, I open my mobile phone and Google is telling me, Damola, on your way to work, you're going to experience 40 minutes delay because on the co bridge there is this. Basically, there is that prediction to tell me, hey, beware. Is that I go through Third Milan Bridge or you look for an alternate place? You know, having an algorithm that allows the doctors to, to predict whether you, based on who you are, the way you dress, talk, where you're coming from, will be actually pay for the services um, if they give you credit. That's a great example of how you can prevent you know, people dying or getting fatally ill. Doctors, you know, we have a huge population. We are top 10 in, in terms of um, uh, mobile connections in the world. So that translates into a very crucial uh, uh, infrastructure that we can use to address most of the issues that affecting us as a country. Information is about reducing uncertainty and we all want to reduce uncertainty. You want to know that you get home today at a certain time and the more you can predict that you can get home at a certain time, the more you can do some other things. In a way, in a way we are all going to have to be data scientists. Um, we uh, work with you know data science Nigeria as an example to actually create in people who are interested in these technologies and are interested in making sense of data can actually go and practice. Yeah, do we have data in Nigeria? Some say we don't have data, but I mean, no matter what side of the divide you, be, you belong to, I think what's obvious is that there's abundance of data in Nigeria. Also, this summit is bringing people together, it's spreading the word, it's helping people to understand how important it is and how technical it is. It's not, data is not something that is just, everybody can just handle it. You need to build competencies and build a community of people who know how to deal with data. Um, I can say that it's a new, it's an emerging market. Um, people are getting aware. Um, from my research, I found out that it's more than you having um, computer skills, it's so part of it, but being able to analyze your data. So the fact that we're having events like this, you know, that's bringing together like-minded professionals and those that are, you know, that have aspirations in the field, you know, it's very encouraging. Data science has been described as the sexiest job for the 21st century. 
And so it's very important for us to figure out what are the necessary tools we need to equip the current industry practitioners and industry leaders today so they can start building that culture of data science expertise. The total amount of patronage we saw in those two years period equals what we see on a daily basis right now on Lara. I'm talking about some single digit thousands on a daily basis right there. So I think like, you know, data has actually helped us in the long run. So impressive. Bio's idea is very laudable. I think it's a very fantastic idea. I think the act of talking and doing is what differentiates them. This is not just about talking. It's about after all this talk today, you spend the next three days doing and solving real problems. That's innovative. That's genuine. He really wants to do the right things. And I think Data Science Nigeria should keep it up and you know, continue this year on year on year until we get to the right place where data has its right place in, in the things we do in our country. But that is an opportunity what we can do. So in my company, we created the Zambos. The Zambos is um, a basic an electronic system that if you put it in the soil, it collects information like temperature, moisture, humidity, electroconductivity of the soil, and then you send that data into a, a cloud server using either GSM Wi-Fi or satellite. And inside that cloud server, we have built some computational algorithms extremely solid mathematical models to make sense of what is happening at that time. A landing point for us to leapfrog and move to the next level as a country. And that's why we're investing a lot in capacity building uh, through our boot camp. Um, from today till Sunday, we're going to have about 150 young Nigerians from all over the countries who will be hosted in an all expense paid you know, learning boot camp where they're going to be exposed to world class machine learning, big data, artificial intelligence tools facilitated by some of the best world class data scientists who are flown in to add capacity to our people. It's been amazing. Um, it's like it's my best experience this year, and I've attended a lot of conferences and things like this. But this has been very different. You know, I flew from South Africa to make sure that you know we can we can help and contribute. Um, it's been a great journey. Yeah, yeah, I had a lot of expectation, and uh, I'm not disappointed uh, with the way the entire. Um, uh, organization of the entire summit has gone and also with the students I can see the hunger, the desire and the passion in them to to learn data science. So that's why I even went to the, the extra mile to be able to give them all that they would need in order to, to survive in the data science world. The best community of data science in Nigeria. Like it's awesome. Like having a community of for data science, we have on web, we have in Android, but for data science, like this is amazing. This is really really amazing. Uh, personally I can gauge I, I, I gauge my level in terms of in terms of knowledge of data science and what I would really want to do in my future. And I think with this um, summit I have a very, very good sense of direction. I can't say thank you enough to him for bringing over 130 people together and impact them with knowledge. Accommodate them, feed them, and also give them knowledge, empower them to go and empower the world, you know. It's different people from different parts of the um, different parts of the world. We had uh, instructors or mentors, I would love to call them, from South Africa, from Canada, from the USA, you know, daily to share with us different things about machine learning, deep learning and the vast opportunities in the big data world, you know. It's a dream come true.
I want to thank all the participants because they have made this boot camp very exciting. Uh, when you have participants who are very energetic, who are passionate to learn, and we are willing to go to the extra, extra mile, you get so much out. You know, when we get 100 people on cargo within 24 hours, competition, that is a big thing. It's a global, you know, you know, success story. So I really appreciate their commitment and the fact that they've traveled off, you know, from far and wide, from far and near, you know, as far as Abuja, Kaduna, you know, Ife, Ilomi, Uyo, you know, Weri, you know, it, it's so awesome. So I appreciate all of them and I wish them a very wonderful trip back to their uh, various destinations and looking forward to hearing great stories about how they've translated data into solutions wherever they find themselves.